The fourth race in the 2007 Absa Off-Road Championship is the killer event of the whole circuit. It's the rough, tough and ready Toyota Kalahari Botswana 1000 Desert Race in the middle of June. And as always, this race with its magnificent history and rich racing heritage will be the decider of the season. The race was started in 1975 and will this year be run from the 15th of June to the 17th. In the early days, this very demanding event was known as the Total Trans Kalahari Road Race and quickly carved a niche for itself on the South African motorsport calendar. Championship leader and two-time winner already this season, Hannes Grobland, navigator Francois Jordan, will be eyeing this one with a glint in the eye. After all, Grobland, current Motorsport SA Off-Road Car Racing Commission president, beat Swanepoel one year in 1986 in a Nissan Safari. Grobland, Richard Leek won in Nissan Hardbody in 02, 03 and 04, with Grobland and Jordan back as the defending champions this year. But don't throw away their Nissan teammates, Superfit Duncan Foss and Ralph Pitchford, who won last time out at Sun City. With that when they closed within 13 points of Hrobla and Jordan in the overall championship. The hosts, Diosa, would dearly love to clinch a 13th title in the longest race on the South African calendar, around 1,000 grueling Ks. And their hopes will squarely be on the shoulders of Mark Ronier and the experienced Chris Birkin. But Nissan have a three-card trick up their sleeve in the overall championship. Mark Ronier, Chris Birkin and the Castor Toyota Hilux lead Norwegian driver Ivar Tollefsen and British co-driver Quinn Evans in another factory Nissan Navara. But in the SP class, points anomalies in the off-road scoring system has Brandon Harkis and John Moore in the big Ford Racing Ranger who lead Tollefsen and Evans by one point with Cronier and Birkin a further three back. While Manfred Schroeder and Ward Huxtable and their Barlow World Absolute Ford Ranger are lying sixth with 25 points, 40 behind Hobler. But they are a very consistent combination and are always a factor over the longer distances. Although Neil Woolridge and Kenny Schulthammer only recorded their first finish of the season in the Pilansburg, Woolridge has won the Toyota 1000 Desert Race three times in three different makes of vehicle. In 96, he and Paul from Mark won in a Nissan Sani, and then they followed two wins with Schulthammer, first in a Mitsubishi Pajero in 2000, and then a Ford Ranger in 01. and certainly have a lot of backup though with Mark Corbett and Rudy Balzar and the Century Property Development Navarro also right in there with a shot at it. Corbett slots in at 8th place on the SP points log but he's been inching closer to better consistency and is also a man for the long haul. This is Chris Fisser who has scored points in SP but racing his clad D truck he will be out in the new SP in Botswana and he'll certainly be a marked man. Another crew has gotten stronger and better organized as the season has progressed is the Mike Karen XL team of Hugo and Yarp de Brain, who logged their first points of the year 2007 at Sun City a few scant weeks ago. The top of the leaderboard in Class D is something of a family affair, with Yuri and Andre Duplessis leading Arnold Duplessis and Johan Knox by a single point. Both teams are out in BB Auto Nissan hard body entries. Just to make it more interesting, Kutsiela Vyskogny, after a heroic performance in the race Sonics Nissan hard body at Sun City, shares second place. Kutsiela was forced to go it alone in the Pilansberg event after co-driver Johan Gerber was forced to return home when his house burned down on the eve of the event. With Gerber not scoring any points, Tian Kun moves into third in the co-drivers' championship. Kun's father Harold is fourth on the drivers' list with a pair out in a Land Rover. The Weichelts, Cliff and Louis in their Toyota have not had a season to write home about yet and will want to turn that around in the Kalahari Desert and Botswana's inhospitable bush. Co-driver Mark Sarua finds himself in fourth place on the navigator's log, while his pilot Gavin Gray is also ready to take things to the next level. The Class E title chase has turned into a four-way battle, and the Toyota Desert 1000 may just be where things are settled here too. The Ford Racing Ranger crew of Jack Beckham and Lucio Santoro lead Yanni Fisser and Jux LaRue in the Team Barberspun Toyota Hilux by a single point. Castor Toyota Hilux crew Brian Martin and Oki Furi are only a point behind Fisser and LaRue, while George and Sharon Barkhaisen in their white Ruacon Toyota Hilux is only a further three points in arrears. This is certainly a scrap to be treasured, and look out for Jack Beckham and Lucio Santoro in that big Ford of theirs. Next best are Kobus von Tonder and Rion Guapa in the time freight Mitsubishi Pajero. They're 23 points behind the Barkhaisens, but they move to the SP class from now on.
And relative newcomers, Roost Racing's Dion Finter and Ian Palmer in Toyota Hilux will be trying to do exactly the same thing, move up the order. Wearing E2, the Bozal Toyota of Mark Moffat and Stuart Moffat will also want to impress after a quiet start to the season. Thomas Rundle in the Baden tyres entry has also shown some solid improvement this year already, and with some slightly better luck, he would have been much further up the points log. But that's off road racing. Whatever the case may be, it's Hobler and Jordan who have stamped down their authority. And even though Foss and Pitchford have closed the gap, their defending national champion teammates will be the ones to beat in Botswana. Three different special vehicle category winners in as many races and new championship leaders. That's a product of the recent Sun City 400 in round three. Off-road racing legend Alfie Cox and Henny Terstecher and the motorbike bat scored their first win of the season to give the new Spec 3 bat a win first time out. It was also a win that took Cox and Terstecher, the reigning SA champions, to the top of the overall and Class A championship log. In the overall championship, they now lead the father and son team of Nick and Ryan Harper in the Atlas Copco bat by four points. A non-finish at the Sun City 400 hurt the Hoppers, and they'll be looking to bounce back in the Toyota 1000 Desert Race, an event they won last year. The Hoppers won round two of the championship, the Nissan Kukli 400 in KwaZulu-Natal, and have a three-point advantage over Evan Hutchison and Achim Bergman in the second motorbike bat. Hutchison and Bergman won the opening event of the season, the Nissan Dealer 400 in the Western Cape. The top five in the overall championship are completed by former SA champion Shamir Varayawa and Siegfried Rousseau in their big total porter, and Nahim Mosaji and Rayon Bodhiana in the total motorsport Jimco. They scored their best national result to date when they finished fifth at Sun City. Nardis Alberts and Colin Hunter and their wraps about are sixth, but did not finish at Sun City, hurt their title aspirations badly. The off-road scoring system with different point structures for overall and class results sees a slight change in the Class A standings. The first three remain the same, while Mosaji and Bodhanya move ahead of Yawa and Rousseau. Herman Silwat and his co-driver Morlay Miller have already given a good account of themselves and had a great finish at Sun City. Meanwhile, former SA champion Terence Marsh, also in the brand new Regent Racing Bat, will be wanting to impress the new sponsors. Gary Gillingham and Peter von Fieren in the Kopenhagen Hotel Bat have been there or thereabouts all season and could supply a surprise or two. In the second region entry, the Kreis, Jan and Hendrik have impressed no end by winning the first three races. They will be tough to beat as they seem to have found a recipe for success. The Adenko bat with Johan and Etienne Besaidnot on board will also be a team to watch out for. They're right up there and have just needed a little more luck. The JRE CLE of Marcus Taylor and Derry Keith have already had their fair share of mentions here on Supersport and there's no reason to believe that they will not be enjoying the same again this time round. The second Adenko bat with Benz Besaidnot and Johan de Brain have designs on a top three finish and could very well upset a few apple carts. And in Lode Brain and Rudy Britz, Ruokon have some serious backup to help their other entrants along the way. Consistency is again paying off for veteran former champion Phil Noll, now partnered by Sandra Lebeskachny in the Luke ATE Zarko Truggy. The East Rand driver is third in the Class B stakes, and like the other competitors, will be hoping the law of averages catches up with the Cry family in Botswana. In Class S, only two crews have managed to score points so far this season. Two wins in a second have given former SA champ Richard Schilling and Chris Davies in the Plastotech Aceco the advantage over Nick Gosler and Richard Carolyn in the Kopenhagen Hotel Super Team Raceco. But Glenn Gibson and Mike Whitehurst will be hoping to get some points in the championship run and get on the podium in class. But the gloves are off as we approach the halfway mark of the 07 campaign. Cox and Terstecher only have a four-point lead from the Harpers, while their stablemates Hutchison and Bergman are in turn only seven down. Expect a big battle over 1,000 Ks on a route that has undergone major alterations. Vehicle and asset finance from ABSA. Going the extra mile to get you financed. SBK, the epic continues. Feel the force, live on Supersport, the world of champions. Why do we care so much? 
Is it the feeling of belonging we get? Is it our heritage? Is it the intensity? The glory? Is it the pride? Why do we come back even if we lose? Because it's not just about the result. It's about the battle. Because this is our home and these are our people. Because today our neighbor is our rival. Because it's the Absa Curry Cup. Exclusively live on Super Sport. Brought to you by Absa. Game on. Gear up for a month of fantastic DSTV competitions. Because we're giving two lucky DSTV couples the chance to win tickets to the 2007 Formula One Chinese Grand Prix, including flights and accommodation. And if that doesn't get your pulse racing, 40 subscribers will also each win an exclusive Jacques Lamar Formula One sports watch. <laughs> To keep you on track, there are also 30 top-of-the-range JNC Navigate GPS systems up for grabs. Wow! And finally, stay on the winning streak with one of 17 fabulous WeBQ 300 barbecues. Visit our website, refer to your dish magazine, or press OK for competition details. DSTV, always so much more for you to win! This week on Boots and All, England has been beaten twice. But was the slow start of the box a problem? Or will better teams make us pay? You have questions, we have the answers. Join our rugby experts on South Africa's premier rugby show, Boots and All on Supersport. This Thursday at 8.30, live. Sponsored by Vodacom, the greatest supporter of SA supporters. Vehicle and Asset Finance from ABSA. Going off the beaten track to find solutions. The Toyota 1000 Desert Race represents the halfway mark in the 2007 ABSA Off-Road Championship. The hosts, however, will want to make a statement. Toyota's last production vehicle category win in the Blue Ribbon event of the National Off-Road Championship came in 1999. Since then, victory has gone to Mitsubishi, Ford and Nissan, with the factory Nissan team this year looking for its sixth victory in a row. You know, Toyota brand needs to be needs to continue to be involved uh, with the desert race. It really is, um, as it is with all off-road racing, it's proof how tough a Hilux really is, um, and how it can how it can compete. And going right back to the early days, uh, the days of Cassie Kutsia, um, Legends, R.P. Renica, um, we've been able to, to to prove how tough Hilux is in a really serious condition. The, the race is now known as the Toyota Kalahari. Uh, Botswana 1000 kilometer desert race and it's really a tough and grueling event. I'm told that the event this year is going to be 70% new territory so the, the drivers um, and the vehicles are up to, up to something completely different from what they've been, been accustomed to in past years and we know how grueling it's been in the past and we expect it to be very very similar to that. But on the other hand, we also hope that most of the vehicles come back uh, without, without uh, damage, uh, obviously, particularly the Toyota vehicles. But what about international participation? And what has the 2010 Soccer World Cup campaign done for the championship series? As we move towards 2010, Southern Africa is getting more and more attention and hopefully sometime in the future we'll be able to attract some international competitors to come and compete in this race. Of course, overseas, they, in, in Europe, they call this cross-country racing. Uh, probably a little bit more environmentally friendly. But for those who don't know, we don't actually destroy the environment. Uh, we, we, we race on, on roads, or the, the drivers race on roads. We spectate uh, in the bush, and we, we, we keep an eye on what's going on. So it's not uh, what people think it is thundering through the bush and breaking things up. And Europe being so environmentally sensitive, um, and us now also developing the sport in, in an environmentally friendly way, uh, we believe that we'll be able to get some competitors um, as Southern Africa becomes more of a tourist destination uh, for sport as well as for general tourism. There is a new route, but it will still be as exhausting and as tough as ever. That, after all, is what the Toyota Desert 1000 has built its reputation on. Now we're moving to a new area, and it'll give the, um, the people in, 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 on the other side of Gaborone, um, out in, in the bush on the other side of Gaborone, an opportunity to see the spectacle. 
uh, to see the vehicles racing at the speed that they do uh, cross country is actually quite amazing, especially for someone who who's hasn't been exposed to racing at all, um, particularly cross country racing. And uh, we really expect um, our, our, our top two drivers uh, to give the Nissans a run for their money this weekend. And um, well, watch next week and uh, hopefully people will be able to see uh, the result. Uh, we are out to, to challenge the, the Nissans this weekend. And after so many great years of racing, what has the race achieved for Toyota? We wanted to know from Brian. I think it's been brilliant for Toyota. You know, Toyota really is a dominant player in the, in the Botswana market. So for us to be able to have probably their biggest sporting event other than soccer, in fact, in some instances, people say it's bigger than soccer. Uh, for us to be involved in an event like that, where we've got really good Hilux customers and Land Cruiser customers, it's really, really good for us. It gives us brilliant exposure um, and it helps us keep, keep the sales rolling in and that's what we're really in the business for. And we say long may it continue. In 1999, Arpi Reinecke and a young Robin Houghton steamed to victory in a Castrol Toyota Land Cruiser. Reinecke has gone on to other things, while Houghton is now the foil for the driving antics of Castrol Toyota pilot Bevan Bertolt. That was the host's last production car win. The Botswana outing is the fourth round of the APSA Off-Road Championship and represents the halfway mark in the series. So far this season, all three wins have gone to factory Nissan Navara entries, with reigning champions Hannes Hrubler and Francois Jordan winning twice, with Duncan Foss and Ralph Pitchford taking the recent Sun City 400. But while Nissan have dominated the season in terms of win, there are indications that an exciting duel in the desert is on the cards. In a super production class, Hrubler and Jordan and Foss and Pitchford face a tough test from another factory Nissan Navara in the hands of Norwegian Ivar Tollefsen and Britain Quinn Evans, as well as the Navara of local crew Mark Corbett and Rudy Balzar in the Century Properties development entry. And both Toyota and Ford will be confident that they can end the Nissan run of wins. Toyota will be represented by two works Castrol Toyota Hilux V6 crews with support from two privateers teams in Hichu and Jaap de Brain in the Mikura Excel Toyota Hilux and Chris Fisser with Jaapi Bardnost in the Tyco Trucks Toyota, while Ford will be represented by two Ford Racing Ranger factory entries and two privateer teams. The Toyota factory pair of Mark Renier and Chris Birkin lie third in the overall championship and after a good outing at Sun City will fancy their chances in the all-new Castrol Toyota Hilux. Bevan Bertolt and Houghton, who will be looking for his fifth Toyota Desert Race win, will also be confident after their recent exploits have shown that Toyota V6s can compete on a level footing with the opposition. The Ford crews will feel the same. Three-time Toyota 1000 Desert Race winners Woolridge and Schulthammer were second at Sun City and will have solid support from Brandon Harkis and Jean Moore in a second factory entry, as well as reigning class E-Champs Manfred Schroeder and Ward Huxtable in the Barlow World Absolute Ford Ranger. A new addition to the Ford stable will be Quibus van Tonda and Ruan Gualpa, who moved from Class E into the SP class. The former Mitsubishi pair have taken over the Ford Ranger in which Woolridge and Schulthammer won last year's SP class championship and will debut the Unifreight Ford Ranger in Botswana. With a premier SP class now loaded with potential winners, the ingredients are there for a memorable race. Krobler and Jordan completely dominated last year's event, but it looks unlikely that they will be allowed to do so again this year. Nissan have also dominated Class D this season and will be looking to see the trend continue. Only one point separates three Nissan drivers, Yuri and Andre Duplessis in the first BB Auto Nissan hardbody. Arnold Duplessis and Johan Knox in the second. And then Kutsia Lobeskachny in his Raisonics Nissan hardbody at the top of the championship. And that opens the way for a terrific scrap. Also part of that battle will be Henry and Maurice Matten in the Raobi Nissan, who had a wretched Sun City 400 with gearbox melodies. They'll be looking to put an end to a troubled season, and they certainly have the pedigree to do just that. Harold and Tian Kun in the Landy have performed consistently this season. The pair picked up a solid third place in the Pilonsberg in what was their first full season of off-road racing. This will either be their first desert race, and it will be an eye-opener for another of the many father and son combinations in off-road racing. But the biggest threat to Nissan is likely to come from Cliff and Louis Weichelt in the Bosel Toyota Hilux. 
The Weichelts have run into early teething problems with the new vehicle, but are highly experienced, and a clean run in Botswana could see them upset the Nissan Apple cart. Surprise, Nissan Kluklui winners Ramon de Seidnut and Stefan Locke add to the Toyota challenge. A steep learning curve faces them on their first desert race. The ingredients are also there for a terrific fight in Class E. Here, five points separate four crews, with Jack Peckham and Lucio Santoro from Ford holding off Yanni Fisser and Jorks Leroux in the Team Barber Spun Toyota Hilux. Brian Martin and Oki Furi in their Castrol Toyota Hilux. And the ever-improving George and Sharon Bonkhuizen in the Rocon Toyota Hilux. For San LaRue and the Bonkhuizens have scored their wins this season, but consistency has kept Peckham and Santoro at the top of the points log. The forward pay will be hard-pressed to keep at bay the Toyota Hordes, but will be reinforced by the likes of Mark and Stuart Moffat in the Bozal Toyota Hilux, and some interesting tussles are certain to develop. In recent times, Class E crews have come up with top five finishes on the Toyota 1000 Desert Race. It could indeed happen again this year. With a high-quality SP class entry and all the prestige that goes with the race, this year's Toyota Kalahari Botswana 1000 Desert Race could turn into a classic. And if a little luck runs their way, the Toyota Cup could overflow. With three different winners in three races so far this season, the special vehicle category in the Toyota Kalahari Botswana 1000 is wide open. Round four of the APSA Off-Road Championship once again provides crews with a test of endurance and reliability. And with tight situations at the top of both the overall and Class A Championship, the Desert Race takes on added importance for title hopefuls. The reigning South African champions Alfie Cox and Hini Ter Stege and the motorbike back Spec 3 went to the top of both overall and class logs with that win of theirs at Sun City. But it's a tenuous lead over Nick and Ryan Harper in the big Atlas Copco bat who won in Kluklui and motorites Evan Hutchison and Achim Bergman who won the Nissan Dealer 400. And the motorbike boys can never be written off. All three crews will be among the fancied runners in Botswana with the Harpers looking for a repeat of their victory last year. As usual, however, there's no shortage of challenges. Shamir Varayawa and Siegfried Rousseau in the total motorsport porter. Then there's Herman Silwath and Mornay Moller in the Silwath Transport Zarko. And Nahim Musaji and Rayan Bodhanya in their total motorsport Jimco have all come up with encouraging performances in recent outings. The fledgling Regent Racing Squad also saw former SA champ Terence Marsh and Peter Krunewald and Mike Whitehouse with Dean Langton picking up good results at Sun City. Add to them the likes of Gary Bertolt and Henry Castain in another Atlas Copco Porter. Nardis Alberts and Colin Hunter in the wraps up bat. Carl Heinz Silvold and Son Quinton in the Silvold Transport Zarco and Robin Gareth Walk in the Super Pay Bat and you have the makings of a first-class battle. Bertolt and Kirstein were within touching distance of winning last year and would like to get that monkey off their backs for once and for all. The Harpers also demonstrated last season that the Toyota 1000 Desert Race is more often than not won in the last 100 Ks. Sheer pace is not a prerequisite for victory in Botswana and it's the crew that can combine speed with patience and reliability that will triumph. Class B has been dominated this season by father and son Hendrik and Jan Kry in the Regent Racing Bat. They have a perfect 3 out of 3 score so far this season and the rest of the Class B runners will be hoping that they lose their way on the trip up to Gabaro. Johan and Etienne Besaidnot in the Adenko Bat, Bez Besaidnot and Johan de Brain in the second, Phil Null and Sandra Lebeskachny in the Luke 8 Zarko Truggy, and then KwaZulu Natal crew Marcus Taylor and Derek Keith in the JRE all pose a threat to the cry father and son combination. The de Brain Brits Roicon Bat combination came up with an encouraging third at Sun City, and reigning champions Ernest Corbett and Warwick Horsen in the Century Property Development Bat will want to get their campaign on track after a late start to the season. Once again, though, it's going to boil down to a question of who can best see out the massive distance. On current form, however, the cries must be outright favourites to make it four in a row. Most of the Class S attention is again going to be focused on the rivalry between current championship leaders Schilling and Davies in the Plastotech Aceco and Sun City winners Gosler and Carolyn in the Kapanang Hotel Super Team Raceco. Schilling and Carolyn are both former Toyota Desert Race overall winners, so there's not a lot you can teach them about this one.
So far this season, they've triumphed twice, and the toughest challenge to the Joburg pair and Gosler and Carolyn is likely to come from Gibson and Whitehurst in the absolute ace go, and the Class S duel in the sand could develop into a major feature of the race. The Toyota 1000 Desert Race proved again last year that there's always a sting in the tail. In terms of picking a winner, it's a case of you pay your monies and you take your chances. But make no mistake, the Botswana locals always make this a great stop on the national roster. There will be one or two surprises as well, though. We've had uh, approximately 80% of the route is new. Um, it still runs up north, a little bit further north than we have in the past. Um, but the same instance as with a thick sand, we've got um, hard ground, we've got rocks, we've got grass, we've got thorns. That's normal desert race route that we have. And how has one of the longest standing sponsorships been to have on board? To have been fantastic. We've had their support approximately 26 years, if I can remember correctly. Um, and every year, they, they've, because the events got bigger and better, we've had more and more support from them. So it's absolutely fantastic. And as always, they will be bumper to bumper racing. But who else has gotten involved in the event? Uh, Botswana Tourism Board. Um, this year, they, they've, they've put it together a huge marketing campaign. Um, they're advertising the newspapers, on the TV, everywhere that you can think of. They're just marketing this event to, to such an extent that I don't think any other event can actually compete with it. Um, from their side, the prize giving as well is well attended by a lot of dignitaries from the tourism board and within the government as well. So their support has been also fantastic. It's just incredible this year. And there are probably some amazing statistics that gets totaled up during an event like this. We've done a, a quick calculation just on the fuel that will be used there. And in, in total, is approximately 750,000 rands worth of fuel that will be used for the event. Um, there's a lot of things that go into it as well, the, the border fees, the um, hotels, the restaurants, the, the shops, everybody seems to benefit from this race. Um, there's no f um, figure that we've actually put towards us, but we just know it's huge. How far ahead does one start planning such a mammoth race over such a huge distance to be negotiated? Well, we started early in January um, with our first meeting. We, we selected the committee, we, we nominated our chairman. Um, and then we had our first meeting at the um, Botswana Tourism Board um, where we got a lot of the information as to what they would like to have happening this year. And then from there on, it's just snowballs. Um, closer to the time as, as we speak now, um, very little normal work gets done. Uh, everything just focuses on, on the TDR. And it's a lot of planning between all the, the commissions, the Motorsport South Africa, um, Botswana government, the police, the, the Air Force, the border crossing officials, everybody's involved with it and it just involves a hell of a lot of uh, meetings. Um, but it all gets done and all gets sorted and as we go along it's, it's in place as we, sleep, as we speak now. And so will we be to bring you all the racing from the prologue through to the final few meters at the end of 1,000 exacting and grueling kilometers. Until then, you keep it on the road, we'll keep it off-road. That was the ultimate test. The absolute.